Just a quick reminder, if you like this video, please do hit that thumbs up button. It does help the channel immensely. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite story of the collection was. Enjoy. I went to college at an older university in the Northeast USA. During my third year, I got to live off campus with some friends in a really neat old house. It turned out it was the third oldest residential home still standing in the town and was only 800 to 900 square feet. It was really cute. There wasn't a lot of old charm left in the architecture, but the hallways were narrow and the rooms cut up in that Victorian manner, so it felt antique. When my three housemates and I rented the house in August of that year, the landlord was relieved. Initially, it had been rented to a professor and her husband in June, and they were going to take the lease through to the following May, but by July they became distant and squirrely made some excuse and called him after they had packed their things and left the home to say they would not be returning. So, he was happy to have tenants, and none of us were particularly rambunctious or big partiers, so it seemed like a decent fit. We moved in and all fell in love with this tiny and quirky house. When I say quirky, let me explain. There was a ladder to the attic that was built to the wall. There were pavers in the backyard that were arranged at odd angles and patterns, jutting out from the ground and not level, but definitely purposefully lame. In the basement, whose footprint was much smaller than the house above it, and all built in feldstone, there were those great big joists for the floorboards above that had been hand-sawn centuries earlier. At some point, someone some students, we guessed, had painted them white and placed green handprints on them. The door to the basement was odd as well. It had a small flap door cut into the bottom, the kind you would put if you kept a cat's litter box in the basement so that they could go down and use it. But when we closely examined it, it was only one way, from the house into the basement. Nothing could return back into the house through it odd, we thought, but we didn't think too much about it at the time. We just got on with school and life. One evening, I awoke to the sound of a housemate going down the stairs to grab a glass of water. I didn't think too much about it, except they were being loud as hell at 2am and turned over. But as soon as they hit the ground floor, they turned around and walked back up again. When they hit the second floor, they started descending. What the hell, I thought, figuring I might have a housemate who was troubled with sleepwalking. My roommate was stirring, and I whispered into the dark if he was awake, which he very much was. We listened for the next minute as our housemate ascended and descended, ascended and descended over and over. At last, we both got up, turned on the light, opened the door, and the noise stopped. No lights were on, no one was on the stairs. We went downstairs quietly so as to not disturb our other housemates to take a look around. And we figured it must be a loose shingle banging or some kind of pipe hitting the side of the house and that we would just deal with it tomorrow. We got in bed, shut off our lights, and within two minutes the sound of someone creeping up the stairs, slowly at first as if testing how loud they could be, began again. The pace grew more quickly, and all of a sudden we both heard our other housemates swing open their doors and yell into the darkness, go to bed. The noise stopped. We got up, opened our door, and looked down the hallway at our housemates hanging out of their doorway. They were bewildered that we weren't on the stairs, and we all checked the house again, returned to our rooms, and slept the rest of the evening. No more noise. We talked about it the following evening, and figured it might be some strange animal, a woodpecker, a raccoon, maybe they had been banging on something outside and the sound traveled inward, making it feel like it was coming from the house. That's it. Problem solved. We all went to bed satisfied. The following day, 
as we were putzing in the backyard, one of my housemates said out of nowhere, Do you think those footsteps were a ghost? He had said what we had all been thinking, and we spent the next two hours talking about strange things that had happened to all of us over the previous couple of months. I'd been making a PB&J in the kitchen one day the week before. I got out the bread, the peanut butter from the cabinet, turned to the fridge to get the jam out. When I turned around, no bread or peanut butter to be found. Completely gone, without explanation. And there were no other housemates home at the time. This was a tiny little kitchen, maybe only three by four with counters all the way around, so I certainly hadn't placed it out of sight. I opened up every cupboard to no avail. I thought, huh, why not? Tapped the button on the microwave, the door sprung open, and inside were my peanut butter and bread, which honestly was unnerving. I didn't want a PB&J anymore. I put them back in the cabinet. I'd forgotten about the jam until I went for a jog the next morning, and when I opened the door at 6 a.m., there it was, on the front stoop, like a lost dog that had found its way home. I threw it out. Also, we had all, from time to time, heard a strange shuffling sound in the basement. I just assumed it was a sump pump because it had that zzzz kind of cadence. They reminded me that we did not have a sump pump. When our landlord came to pick up the rent for the following month, the four of us were home. We'd figure we would use this as an opportunity to be slick and ask questions about the house to find out what he knew about its history. He seemed a little on edge when we brought the subject up, but humored us kindly. When I asked if he had heard from the previous tenants, he avoided the subject. When a housemate asked who he had purchased the house from that had lived there previously, he informed us that in fact the house hadn't been lived in for 20 years before we bought it. Turns out, the individual who had lived in the house 20 years plus prior was a bit of a ne'er-do-well in this college town. So much of a ne'er-do-well that his family arrived to pick him up one day, finding him dead, having overdosed in the dining room. Okay, got it, thanks. We had a ghost, and we decided to name him William. Three to four nights a week, the footsteps on the stairs would start slowly, and then reach such a pace that one of us would get out of bed in a huff, open the door, and scream, Go to bed, William, and the footsteps would stop for the evening. This was multiple times a week, for a year. We didn't like to talk about him in the house, so any William discussions happened off the property as we were convinced that he was listening. One evening, we were watching a new episode of Lost, that should date the story appropriately, and the smoke monster character was on. My roommate joked that William was our smoke monster. At that moment, every blind in the living room, four, covering two windows, was violently jerked up simultaneously. We all looked wide-eyed at him. He gathered himself together, and in little more than a whisper said, I'm sorry, William, I didn't mean it. We lowered the blinds and went back to the program. Things continued like this pretty regularly throughout the fall semester and remained much the same until one night in the spring, maybe around March or April, in the middle of the night, we awoke to a loud crack from downstairs. When I say loud, I mean don't give a damn breaking and entering loud. I grabbed a bat that I kept by the side of my bed, convinced that someone had broken through our front door. This college town was a little rough around the edges, as you might surmise. My roommates and I both sat up and looked at each other, and we listened. Nothing. We saw our housemates down the hallway peering through a sliver of their door. I went into the hallway and banged the bats against the railing, and said in the bravest voice I could muster, All right, you want to break into our freaking house? Come get it. We turned on the lights, bounded down the stairs as a posse, and found nothing. Front door was locked and tight. Back door was locked and tight. Everything looked good. I went to go turn off the downstairs switch to go back up to bed, and then I saw it. The basement door 
had a crack running up from the bottom of it to about two-thirds of the way, right in the center. It had been broken almost in two from the inside of the basement. The basement was a self-contained space. It didn't have any other entrances or exits. Whatever had broken the door had been in the basement. Needless to say, we all lost our minds and decided to sleep in one room together, though none of us got much rest. While the footsteps and moving objects continued for the rest of the time, there wasn't anything quite as terrifying as that night. We finished out our lease, and all moved out to other homes. I had to return there in October of my senior year to pick up mail that hadn't been forwarded to my new address. A young woman came to the door, and I explained who I was. She kindly handed me a stack of mail that had come for me, and I thanked her. As I turned to leave, I had a thought. I spun around before she closed the door and said, Hey, this might sound odd, but have you guys noticed anything strange about this house? She went white as a sheet. She asked me why I had asked that question, and I let her know that we had noticed some odd things when we lived there, and that it probably... You mean like the footsteps on the stairs at night? She interrupted. Yep, like those, I said. Her two housemates came down and we stepped outside. I shared my tales and they shared theirs. I told them just to tell William to go back to bed and it would be okay. That was the last time I ever visited that house. I think of William often, though not fondly. I literally downloaded Reddit so I can vent about this because I could get fired if I talk about this. I'm a lifeguard at a water park in Las Vegas. We always brag about how, unlike our competition, we've had zero casualties at the current location. Stuff always happens, like tubes will appear in the pool after we just took them all out and stacked them. Chairs will move around after we just sorted them. Wet footsteps on concrete when no one was wet, etc. We joke that we don't get paid enough to fight demons. It was just a joke to us, but not to our supervisors or managers. They always made excuses. It was always the wind, or oh, I moved it, or they're my prints. They always got angry at us and said that someone could overhear us and complain. They even went as far as to threaten us with a defamation lawsuit if we talked about it on social media. Weird, right? If the park wasn't haunted, why would they care so much about us talking about it? I never cared because I believed my supervisors and managers. Maybe they did move the chairs. Maybe they dipped their feet in the pool and walked away. That was until last month. It was 10 p.m., and we had just finished cleaning the park. I had to stay later because I was getting a ride from my supervisor, Ryan. We were the few people left in the park, so we were doing a final walkthrough just to make sure everything was clean. We only had a flashlight and a few light posts illuminating our path around the park. We were walking by some slides when I hear someone, a woman, say... Hello? I looked at Ryan, who didn't seem to hear it. Then we heard her again. Hello? I freaked, and Ryan again didn't seem to hear it. Did you not hear that? I said to Ryan. He shrugged and continued walking. I stopped and said I didn't want to do the walkthrough with him. He rolled his eyes and said if I didn't, I'm refusing to work, which isn't a good thing to say to your supervisor. He told me I was probably just hearing things. I got a hold of myself and continued walking. We started getting to the back of the park where the light posts were dimmer and it was much quieter since we were further from the running water and the slides. Ryan and I started talking about school and college and what we were going to do when the season ends when I heard it again. But it sounded closer this time. Hello? Anyone there? She sounded very confused and tired. I jumped, and again, Ryan did not care at all. 
I was so freaked out. I started feeling nauseous. I wanted to go home, but Ryan was my ride home, so I had to stay. What happened next haunts me. After we heard the voice, we heard what sounded like someone climbing out of the lazy river soaking wet. No one else was there. If they were, they would have been in the office. No one should be swimming. Ryan was angry. He thought a lifeguard snuck into the river. He turned around and started yelling, What the hell? Go home. This isn't fun. And he froze. And I said a quick prayer and turned around, and there was a lady, soaking wet, wearing a park shirt with our logo on it, but the logo looked very 2000s. I know what our shirts look like. I stand in the shop all the time to get some AC. I've never seen a shirt like that. She was hunched over, and her hair covered her face, and she spoke. Hello? Can you help me? Ryan grabbed my arm and we bolted to the office. Lifeguards weren't allowed inside the office, ever. It's the whole thing, but he let me come inside. He pulled one of the managers into the supply room and shut the door. Another supervisor started asking me if I was okay. I was breathing heavily and couldn't speak, but... I nodded yes. Ryan and the manager came out of the room, and Ryan grabbed his stuff and said, let's go. We got in his car, and he said we needed to stop by the gas station first. When we pulled in, he told me to type my address into his phone while he pumped the gas. When he got in the car, I broke the silence. What the hell was that that happened? He turned the car on and started driving. I can't tell anyone, it's like a park secret, but I'll tell you, if you swear you won't tell anyone. I swore. Back in 2002, before this location of the park was built, there was a park on the Strip. It was the only water park in Vegas. We only had one casualty, and it was a lady who came in with her family. She got drunk and went into the lazy river where she sank to the bottom of the river and because there were so many tubes, the lifeguards didn't see her, and she drowned. That's why we have so many lifeguards for the river, and why our tubes are see-through. So, was that her? Yeah. Why is she here? I don't know, she's probably confused. She's always asking for help. So you did hear her? Yeah, but everyone does when you're in the park late at night. It's a whole different story if you see her. So I asked, what happens if you see her? Nothing, but it's scary. The car ride was silent the rest of the way. I still work at the park, but Ryan talked to the managers and convinced them to let me work only morning shifts. Ryan quit recently due to college. I only told two co-workers, but only because they've had experiences themselves. <sighs> Thank you for letting me vent. Also appreciate lifeguards and all the crap that they go through. This is my very first post ever. As soon as I saw this subreddit, I knew I would have to share my experience. Sorry if my grammar and spelling is a mess, but I'm shaking and it's hard to talk about still. This happened when I was around 16-ish. I'm 20 now. Me and a friend of mine thought it would be a good idea to play with a Ouija board, at night, in the middle of a park near my house. We asked it the normal teenage questions like, is there anyone there, what's your name, etc. When it was happening, we never got precise answers, so we just thought it was all fake. I got fed up and said something like, if this is actually real, touch me or make a noise. That was when we heard something, but we blew it off automatically. He drove me back home after that and just left the board in his car. We never really talked about it again, because nothing really happened. It wasn't until a couple days later, when I was alone in his car waiting for him, that I started hearing whispering and tapping noises coming from his trunk where the board was. I looked into the rearview mirror, where I caught a glimpse of a boy. 
it started to freak me out so much that I actually left the car and waited for him outside. When he came back, I asked him if he'd been hearing weird things or seeing things, and he just said no, so I just thought I was going crazy. For another couple of days, it was all fine and dandy. Didn't hear anything, didn't see anything. It wasn't until a week later that I saw him again. It was the middle of the night, and I got out of bed to use the bathroom. When I opened my door, right in front of it sat a small boy with bloody stubs for legs, wearing old-fashioned clothing. He didn't have a face, but he did have giant black eyes that looked like holes. I blinked once, and he was gone. I just went to the bathroom and went back to sleep. That was the moment that everything changed. At night, I started to hear something crawling and dragging itself on the floor of my room. I started hearing things all the time. It would say things like, stay with me, and it would constantly call my name. It would close and open doors for me. I had this feeling like something was always watching me and was always right behind me. I saw him once again after all of this started. I was going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and I have a bad habit of always looking in the mirror as soon as I get into the bathroom. That is when I saw him floating behind me in the mirror, just staring at me with his missing legs and black eyes. I turned around as fast as I could, but he disappeared. That's when I asked him what his name was, and right next to my ear I felt a breath and heard the name Eddie. In a way, it made me feel better and calmer now that I knew his name. Things continued to happen more often than they used to, but he started to be more helpful in a way, like opening a door when I asked and closing them when I asked. I honestly didn't want him to leave, I felt comfort in knowing he was around. Weird, I know. It wasn't until the incident happened that I started feeling unsafe. Eddie never followed me out of my house, or at least I never noticed him out of my house until one day. I was at my then boyfriend's house while he was at work, and his family was away. I was sitting on the couch in the living room when I felt the whole house shake. I don't live in an area where earthquakes ever happened, so I knew it wasn't that. Cabinets in the kitchen started opening and slamming shut. Anything that was on the counters flew off, doors started slamming shut. It wasn't until I screamed for him to stop that he stopped. After that, Eddie became super productive and possessive of me. He used to make me sick, so I couldn't leave the house. He used to drain the battery within my phone and car. He seemed to do everything within his power to stop me from leaving. I finally told my mom what was happening, and we got a priest in to bless me and the house, and we saged the house as well. I haven't seen him since. Now, I always have holy water on me, but I'm still not afraid of spirits. This was still one of the most traumatic experiences I ever had, and I can't tell the story without feeling uncomfortable amounts of pressure on my neck, so I hope you enjoy it. I do have many more stories of ghosts within my house, and my sister has some stories as well. Let me know if you'd like to hear any of them. So, my grandma bought her house when I was about five years old, and I was told that before there was any house on that land, it used to be an Indian cemetery. Some background, when she bought the house, it was from an older widow. Her husband had passed away in the master bedroom, and it was said that after that happened, her jewelry started disappearing and she never found them. Okay. So, fast forward to when I was about in fourth grade, I used to sleep in my grandma's room. She worked in a cannery, so every morning she would wake me up before she left, and I would stay up until it was time to get ready and head to school. That morning, I heard her leave, so I got up and then went to the bathroom. When I returned, I laid up in her bed. When I turned around to turn the TV on, 
I saw a black shadow in the form of a man. He came out of the bathroom that I was just in and ran all the way to underneath the bed. The closer he got to the bed, the smaller he got. I honestly thought it was maybe my brother or cousin trying to scare me. I crawled over to the edge of the bed and proceeded to look under it. Why I did this, I honestly don't know, but I did. When I saw that there was no one there is when I freaked out. I got up and ran out of the room, closing the door behind me. My uncle's door was the other bedroom next to Graham's. He used to live there with his girlfriend. I sat crying next to it and started knocking on it trying to wake them up, but at the same time trying to make as little noise as possible. I had direct view to my grandma's room. Yes, it was closed, but I could see a shadow going side to side, as if someone was walking back and forth in front of the door. After a few minutes, my uncle and his girlfriend hear me, so they get up. I told them everything, so they walk with me back to the room and look underneath, and of course, there was nothing. They stayed with me until I left for school. After that, I never stayed or went into my grandma's room by myself ever again. Well, until years later. Some months after, my mom, stepdad, sister, and myself ended up moving to Mexico. I didn't return until I was 21. When I brought up this experience I had, my family informed me that I always used to wake up crying, saying that I saw things in the house. I honestly just remember this one instance, so maybe I blocked it all out? Anyways, I have more stories about the house that my grandma still lives in. Let me know if you would like to hear more. So there you go, friends. That was a collection of four pretty damn interesting paranormal stories. You got some pretty neat ones, um, some shadow men, or shadow people, I guess I should say. Haunted Park, um, the Ouija board incident, and then of course the Haunted House. Definitely some interesting stuff, definitely some good paranormal stories for this beautiful day, and I hope you all enjoyed them. Thank you to the Redditors who let me read their stories, as always, and a huge thank you to anyone who decided to listen to this video to this point. Yeah. Thank you. Anyways. If you did enjoy this and would like more like this, please consider joining the Nevermore. To do so, I gotta do is hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. That makes you part of the Nevermore. Doing so gets you on the ground floor of the Nevermore, but if you want to take that elevator up a couple levels, you can follow me on any of my social media platforms, or if you want to take it to the top floor, you can support the channel over Patreon or Coffee. All patrons get early access to my videos in audio format as well as other goodies, so please consider it. If you don't want to consider it, that's fine too. Oh, that's it, friends. I hope you have a beautiful day, and I love you all, and I will see you on the next video. But until then, my friends, sleep well.